Let's turn our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to look at verse 1 through 8. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 through 8. The title of the message is Stay in the Light. Stay in the Light. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving up thanks. For this ye know that no whoremonger nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord." Walk as children of light. Brother Jay, can you pray for the message? Lord Jesus Christ, thank you so much for all this salvation. Thank you for the blood which washes all sins away. We ask you that you'll cover this place with your blood. Cover your preacher with your blood. Bless him, Lord, and whatever message you have instilled in him. Pray that you'll give a free course to declare your word unto each and every one of us. We ask you that you'll open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. Help us not to think of anything else besides your word. We ask you that you'll keep away devil's attack. We just want to give you all the glory and honor. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Stay in the light. I don't know about you, I'd rather be in bright place instead of dark place. I'd rather be in a place where I could see instead of a place where I can't see. But as you know, as we get closer and closer to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the world is getting darker and darker. People are attracted to darkness. Unfortunately, as a human being born into this world with sin and as sinners, you and I are naturally attracted to things of darkness. Turn your Bibles to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. John chapter 8, we got to look at verse 12. The Bible says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So we know Jesus Christ is the light of the world. However, how many you know, people follow the light? Let's go to John chapter 3, same book, John chapter 3, verse 19. John chapter 3, verse 19. John 3, 19, the Bible says, And this is a condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. People love darkness, and people love, love, love to be in darkness because they're doing evil. Even as Christians, say, you know, just like the hymns that we sang, you know, send the light, you looked at the light, and you got saved. 
by trusting him as your Lord and Savior. However, until the day of the rapture or until you go to heaven, you still have thing called flesh, and you have thing called the world, and you have thing called Satan. And those three things will constantly tempt you and make you commit sin. And however, you have choice not to do them. Think about all the times that you commit sin. Many times you commit sin in darkness. When light has gone down, when sun has gone down, and you're in a room by yourself, or you're in a room with someone else, or a group of people. And that's when you tend to commit sin. How many of you guys will go out in this you know, street right now when it's bright, when there's sun and it's a beautiful weather, and do some sins that you've committed in the past? Are you willing to do it? I mean, God, this world is so bad right now. You know, people do commit sin out in the open. You know, they assault people. You know, they commit these hideous crimes. However, especially you as Christians, who has Holy Spirit inside of you, who convicts you every time you're about to sin or when you commit sin, are you willing to go out there right now and do the things that you would do when it's in darkness? And especially young people nowadays, with advancement of technology, you have your cell phone, you have your internet everywhere. You know, there's, there's a problem when you have to lock your door. I tell you that. There's a problem when your mom or your dad opens a door and you freak out. There's a problem when you put a sign in front of your door at your parents' place, do not come in, always knock. Why? Why do you put those signs up? It's not because you're reading your Bible all the time. It's not because you're on your knees praying to God all the time. It's not because you're witnessing to someone, say, now virtual world through Zoom or anything. No, because you're looking at wicked things. You're doing the wicked things. You know, don't try to kid to me. I live your experience. Your parents lived your experience, went through all the same temptations, went through all the, you know, falls, and went through all these things together. Even grown up, same thing too, right? If you have, if you have, I mean, you're, you have husband and your wife, there's no reason that, you know, you should be closing the door and have the door locked so that one of your spouses can come in. Why? What? Do you have to hide? You know, the characteristic of light is what? It shines on everything. You know, light reveals things. Something always is noticed in light. Is there something in your life that you are ashamed? Is there something in your life that you don't want the light to shine on? There's got to be something. Why? because you and I are not perfect. If you say, you know, light could shine on my life 24 seven, well, I'm gonna say you're perfect. Well, only perfect person will not commit any sin. Only Lord Jesus Christ was perfect. Man who walked on earth. Then as human being, even if you're saved, one thing is certain, time to time, for some, unfortunately, all the time, you live in darkness. You know, Jesus Christ said what? Ye are the light of the world. Are you the light of your house? Are you the light of your family? Are you the light amongst these lost souls out there? Are you the light in your community? Are you the light wherever there are lost souls out there? We walk through this dark world in this day and age. You're like, oh, I see the light. I mean, think about spiritual sense. It's dark. You and I were work, walking in darkness as well, but we saw the light. And thank God, you know, 
we accepted the light. We trusted the light. We accept the light as our Lord and Savior, and we got saved. However, there are so many people around your life. They're in darkness, total darkness. You are to be light to those people. If you stay in the light, your light will be shining. However, if you're not staying in the light, if you're leaning towards darkness, then your light has dimmed so much that it doesn't shine anymore. Something is always noticed in darkness, even through the dim light, right? When we are in total darkness, you know, at night, go to a room and we're looking for certain things, right? We're looking for, you know, tools. We're looking for, you know, whatever it may be, materials. We turn on the light or we have, you know, flashlight or cell phone light, and then we try to search through it. And then you look at it, because light is that important. However, you do not love light. You look at your life. You're like, oh, you can't say that to me. But you look at your life. Sometimes you have to wake up and you have to get out of your trance. You have to get out of your comfort zone. You have to get out of your this, you know, state of daydreaming. You have to get out of this you know, foolishness where you think that everything's all right. It's not. You have to stay in the light, but light's not shining. If we pick 10 people or even five people in your life who's closest to you, right? Few from your family and few from your friends and few from your workplaces, when they see you, and then we give them a survey, check, you know, you know, a simple survey. One, darkness. Ten, very light. Where would they, you know, check your mark? I mean, to me, a lot of people would be towards darkness, right? Like, oh, never heard anything about Jesus Christ. Their life is full of sin, you know. Never seen any kind of, you know, gospel message preached to them or passed on to them, right? For some of you, you're no different than total blank dark page. When Jesus Christ commanded, he said, ye are the light of the world. Let your light shine, right? If your light is not shining, then you're not obeying Jesus Christ. If you're not Letting your light shine, then it tells you, it tells me, it tells people around you one thing. You're not staying in the light of Jesus Christ. You know, there's comparison, right? Jesus Christ is the sun and we are the moon, right? How does moon gives out its light? The reflection of the sun. The reason you and I are not shining light in this dark world is because we don't have, we don't get enough reflection, light of Jesus Christ. Uh, when, even though it's dark, when there's full moon, it feels pretty good. You could really kind of see things, especially when we go on a camping, you know, when there's church retreat, you know, we are out there maybe playing, you know, used to play, you know, capture the flag at nighttime. Okay. It's, 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 it's good because you don't really need flashlight all the time because that you know light that's coming from the moon you could see things so that you won't trip over you know and then fall into you know all this you know, horrible places or fall down and get hurt think about it you know lord's about to come back sooner than later and then you're working walking in this dark world and then someone's got to show the light so that people can get saved it should be you. It needs to be you. But however, you're like that flashlight. That battery has just gone dead, right? And unfortunately for some Christians, when that battery is dead, they never replace it. They just stay in that dead state forever and ever until their death or until the Lord comes back, right? Which state are you in? 
Are you in that dead battery state where the light is really, really dimming and it's about to go out? Where you're no different than anybody else. You're no different than saved or unsaved. You're no different than anybody who doesn't do anything for Lord Jesus Christ. Why would you repay what the Lord has done for you with your sorry state, right? A lot of times, you know, I need to be pricked. You know, I need, be, I need to be convicted and preached upon because my flesh is so strong that it overwhelms me many times if I'm not in the light, right? Again, for some of you, when you're about to commit sin, just put a bright light in your room, in your bedroom, you know, open your curtains, let the light come in. I guarantee you, 50% of your sins you're not going to do because you feel embarrassed, because you feel shameful. Why? Because light has that kind of effect. You know, light dispels darkness. Light can be everywhere at once. Light is also essential for growth and healing. Some of you guys don't grow. Why? Because you don't stain the light? Because you don't have the light in your life. Turn your Bibles to the book of Psalms. Psalms 119. Psalms 119, verse 105. Psalms 119, verse 105. And you ask, preacher, then how can I stay in the light? You know, I just got saved, or I just never really was close. Or, you know, I wanted to preach for Jesus Christ, but I don't know. How can I stay in the light? Psalms 119, verse 105. The Bible says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You need light? You have the word of God. I mean, you have the word of God. All right? I'm sure many, many, many of you have already memorized this verse in your heart. But how many of you guys actually, you know, put it into action, right? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. In this dark world, you need light. And what does the Bible say? You have the word of God. Do you have word of God as your compass, as your guiding light every day of your life, 24-7? If you don't, then what's going to happen? If you don't have right compass and you are navigating these places, what happens? You gotta go to wrong places. Uh, you and I, we always use GPS nowadays, right? Whether it's Google, Waze, you know, Apple Maps or anything, when we go from places like point A to point B. If you use the wrong one or if the GPS is messed up, if it hasn't been updated, what happens? It's going to lead you to wrong road. It's going to lead you to wrong places. And you're going to have to make a detour. Then you lose time. And you might not make you know, your appointment on time as well. In your Christian walk, when you don't have the word of God as your light in your everyday path, then what happens? You're going to go to wrong places. That's why, God forbid, but you and I go to certain places that we should never go to as a Christian, right? I mean, just because you're Christian, just because you're saved, doesn't mean that you're all holy and you're never going to commit sin. Especially if you have done stuff in the past, right? That old you, it's going to start clinging onto you and trying to make you remember the pleasures that came. Right? For some, maybe it's you know, drinking. Right? Maybe that alcohol is enticing you. Maybe for some, it might be drugs. Right? Maybe for some, it's worldly concert. You know? I, I mean, it's, it's hard to see Many Christians, so-called, will fall into 
you know, traps of devil's music and say, oh, just because there's a lyrics, it's fine. No. You take out the lyrics, it's all same as you know, worldly pop music, rock and roll, and rap music, same thing. You're just putting in the words in there. That's not spiritual. That's all fleshly. As you look at your Christian walk, I mean, is staying in the light that important to me? Or do I neglect it many times? When I'm by myself or when I'm with people? For some, it's very hard. Because of peer pressure, you tend to neglect the light. You tend to neglect that I am supposed to be shining Jesus Christ to these lost friends around me. Instead, you just want to have more fun. You want to have more pleasure. At the end of the day, if you don't shine your light to your lost friends, and, you know, God forbid if they die in their lost state and wake up in hell and burn there forever, and at the judgment, white throne judgment, you know, they're going to be pointing at you. Why did you never shine that light upon me in that darkness? Why didn't you give me a track? Maybe I would have had a chance. Why didn't you talk to me about heaven or hell when that subject actually came up? As we were watching TV or looking stuff on the YouTube, someone was making fun of Jesus Christ, heaven and hell. How come you didn't say anything? When someone was joking about, you know, Jesus Christ, when someone was taking his name in vain, how come you didn't say anything? How come you just laughed it off? How come you felt like one of us? And they're going to be pointing at you. But their blood, just like Book of Ezekiel said, will be required on your hands. I don't know about you, I get squeamish, you know, when I have to deal with blood, right? And that's why I don't think I ever had a chance to become a doctor because I can't really cut open anything, right? But imagine, I mean, any of you guys like to have, you know, blood on your hands? Let it drip on your hands? I don't think so. But that's what you're doing when you are not being the light to the lost world out there. And it is so simple. It is easy to do. It's, it's not that hard to spread the gospel, right? Especially when you have, you know, resources out there nowadays. You know, people are like, I can't, it's, it's hard for me to talk to people. I completely understand, right? It is hard to talk to people, especially about Lord Jesus Christ. That's why you have tracks, you know? I mean, who doesn't want to read, you know, cartoon tracks, right? Everybody grew up reading some kind of cartoon or comic books, I believe, right? You know? Well, you see it, you tend to read it. It's not just one long word, you know, like an essay, you know, 3,000 word essay you're reading. No, you're just reading, you know, chick track. You can't even do that. You can't even pass out a track to your friend or your coworker, right? I mean, that means that you don't love their souls at all. That means that you are so backslidden that you don't really care about important things of the Lord. Lord became a light in your life so that you could be light to others. Lord did his job. Lord accomplished his side. What about you? Are you doing your job? Are you actually, you know, fulfilling what you're supposed to do? There are too many excuses in our lives. I'm too busy, you know. I have so many things to do. I have this, 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 this. Excuses are not gonna work. You and I could always find time to do important things. If you just started dating someone and then you guys are in love and your loved one says, I really wanna see you you know, six o'clock in the morning because that's the only time I have because rest of the day I have to work. And then you just got out of work from your graveyard shift. 
But however, if you truly love that person many times or all the time, you don't care about your tiredness because that person is important to you and you're going to meet that person. If you would do that to a person that you love, how come you don't or will you do that for Lord Jesus Christ who loved you and who died for you, giving, shedding his precious blood so that you could have eternal life? Many times you and I only look at what's just in front of us. We don't look at beyond, right? When everything's said and done, God's going to be the light, right? You don't need the sun. You don't need the moon. Before that day comes, wouldn't you want to be part of, you know, Lord's, you know, ministry? Wouldn't you want to be someone who's faithful to the Lord? I mean, there's a difference between someone who serves the Lord and someone who doesn't. And it comes, it comes down to just one thing, being faithful, right? In a normal relationship, faithfulness determines whether married couple will go a long time or not. People being unfaithful to each other, that's why there's divorces, that's why there's separation, because one party or both party was not faithful to each other. One thing for sure is that Lord Jesus Christ will always be faithful. He's always going to be faithful. Now the question is, will you be faithful as well? Again, we're not perfect. We will always fall here and there. But you and I have to get up. You and I have to you know, get right with the Lord and get up again and continuously be faithful. You know, again, Sometimes we're unfaithful because we're not perfect. However, do you want to stay unfaithful for the rest of your Christian life? Do you want to be designated or seen as someone? Oh, him? Yeah, he's unfaithful. Her? Unfaithful. And it's not coming from me. It's not coming from outside world. It's coming from your own family. Because your family knows you the best. And a lot of times, your family knows every details of your life, good and the bad. And for the sake of the family, a lot of times, you know, it's not like your wife, your husband, your children's going to suddenly go to church or go to, you know, gatherings and say, you know what? My mom did this. My dad did this. My husband and wife did these horrible things. No, you won't say it because it brings shame. However, inside of your circle, Inside of your closest circle, your family knows what's wrong with you, what's good with you, what's bad about you, and knows all of these things, very intricate, very detailed stuff. Then, if I or anybody were to ask your family member, is he, is she, the light? that's shining in your family. You and I could always act. We could act outside. However, inside, it will really show. Your family will show. Then what does that make you? It gives you more challenge. It gives you more determination and commitment. You know what? I don't want to be just Sunday Christian. I don't want to be just Wednesday Christian. I don't want to be the light that only shines on weekends. I want to be that light that shines every day. I want to be the light that shines 24-7. I want to be that light that Lord will be proud of because He is the light. I want to be that light, reflects His light every day, every single day. I mean, did your family ever seen you pray? Did your family ever seen you read the Bible? Did you ever study Bible together with your family? I mean, did you ever be an example, good example, to your family members? You know, if, it's, if you did, you know, that's good. It's going to start growing, and you're going to be a good influence. However, other way around, if you haven't, then they're going to see you, and they're going to feel the same. Oh, you know, my dad doesn't do it. My mom doesn't do it. My brother, sister, they don't do it. Why should I do it? And you become bad example, and then you take the whole ship down, right? 
instead of, you know, you know, going to the promised land on a sailing ship in happy land, right? No, it's because of your mindset. Do you want to be faithful to the Lord? Do you want to stay in the light? Do you want the Lord's light to shine? Then we have our compass, which is the Word of God. Stay in the Word of God 24-7. Stay in the Lord 24-7. Be the light 24-7. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the Word of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for being the light of the world and saving us from hell through your precious blood, Lord. We tend to forget how important it is that we need to be the light in this dark world. Help us to realize and recognize that it's not just part-time that we need to shine light, but it is full-time, 24-7. If, if there's any darkness in our lives that is hindering your light to shine, Lord, help us to get right with you. Help us to confess our sins and turn away from them so that we will shine brightly to this lost world out there and be the light to our families, friends, co-workers, and close ones, Lord God. We pray for Pastor Shrive, Lord. Lord God, please, and only you can do it. In your will, Lord, please heal him. And we pray that all the administrative stuff and surgery date, everything will be said. And we pray for everyone here, Lord God, Help us to truly be faithful to you. And Lord, until you come back, help us to be found faithful. Even so, come Lord Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.